Hi, I'm Dave Coach, and welcome to my video on my photography and my editing technique. And probably your first question is, who the hell is Dave Coach and why should I listen to him? And you know what? I don't blame you. I am the first to admit, I am not the world's greatest photographer. There's a lot of photographers I look up to that I try to emulate. I've still got a lot to learn. To be honest, I think there are 20 or 25 techniques that you're going to end up using. If you are just HDR, if you are just flambient, you are limiting yourself tremendously. The ideal photographer, in my mind, goes into a room or a situation, analyzes what the components of the room are, thinks about what their needs are, and then chooses a technique based on what what would give them the best results. So in a nutshell, that's what I'm here offering you, a different technique, a new way to put together images that may or may not work for you. You know, I just wanna put this out there. Maybe this will spark something in you to do your photography different or in a different way or something like that. And kind of think this is not a basic tutorial. I, I think when you're first starting out in this field, you're, you're probably going to gravitate at least towards uh, HDR and shoot your, your multiple images and then, you know, run those through um, Lightroom or I can never remember the name of that program. Um, this is probably a little beyond what, what you're ready for right now if I'm being completely honest. I think you need to have some measure of experience with Flash for this to help you at all. All the techniques that I'm going to go over here in, involve using flash in your images. And if you don't have some sort of idea how to control your flash, and if you don't have a few flashes, you won't really be able to get much out of this. Um, I know earlier in my career when I was watching videos, specifically a Rich Baum video, um, I watched it. And I thought I learned everything and I watched the video, so I learned everything there was to do in it. And somehow I ended up six months later watching it again. And, and it was amazing because I learned something new in that video. And I think that's an important point to keep in the back of your head. If you're not to a point where you understand or whether, where you, your knowledge level is equal to what's being taught to you, the things that are being said will just go over your head. You won't realize or note the importance of them. You know, you will, you'll get the things that are at a level that you can understand, but things that are a little further down or further above you, you um, you'll just kind of skip or gloss over. And I, I think that is um, very true in photography because if you don't understand a technique, you don't understand its importance. It may be a good idea, I'm just throwing this out, watch the videos, watch them again in six months, maybe you'll pick up new things that you didn't see the first time through because they, they just didn't mean anything to you. The gear that I use, it, you know, I, I so many people, what's the best camera to get? What's the best this? What's the best that? You know what? It really doesn't matter. You can shoot Sony and get great images. Wayne Capelli is a great example. He shoots APC Sony. And I mean, I, you'd be hard pressed to find a better photographer than Wayne Capelli. Um, I personally use Nikon. Um, this is a Nikon Z8. Don't use this. I use a Nikon um, uh, Z62, I think, for my regular real estate photography. And um, I actually use it in medium raw format, not large format. You know, again, think about what we're doing. We're shooting pictures, we're gonna deliver it 2,000 pixels on a side. You don't need giant, humongous images. Probably you're sending them to Vietnam. You don't want giant humongous images. So, you know, shoot for what you are delivering. Um, so I would say, you know, an APC is not going to matter. Full frame is not going to matter. A good lens is what matters. But a good lens is not something like this. You don't need an f2.8 to get good real estate pictures. 
I shoot all my real estate on a Nikon Z 14 to 30 f4. You're never gonna shoot at f4. You're never ever gonna shoot at f2.8, not in real estate photography. So getting the faster lenses is wasting your money. Get something with a good zoom range, 14 to 30 is really, really good, I think. That covers pretty much what you will need in real estate. And then, um, you know, the F4 is, is fine for what we do. We're gonna be shooting everything at F8 and, and right around in F8. Um, so the, the faster lenses really don't make a difference. Um, you want a great depth of field. You don't need a shallow depth of field. So again, those fast lenses don't do you any favors other than take your money. So that's what I'd say there. As far as flashes, this is pretty much the beast, the workhorse of what we do. This is an AD200. I think we all know these. Um, I use, on a daily basis, two of these. Um, I call them C and D. Um, because that's how I program them in. Um, I typically use them, like I said, I use two of them and I'll use them in pairs to, um, to give me a good flat lighting. That's the basis of my flash technique, is to start with a flat light that you can then um, work your um, shadows and things into. If you're clumsy like I am, I would get one of these Godox um, little shields for the bottom. The, these switches are very, very delicate and break if you look at them wrong. So, um, you know, that has really helped me keep from having to send these to Cheetah Stand once every six months. So that's a good thing to have. I augment my lighting with one of these. It's an AD100 Pro, I believe. Um, and then I had a magnetic mount 3D printed for this. So if I need to, I can use the bulbous head on it. Um, I love these. I love them so much because they give you such a great diffusion of light. No matter where you're pointing this at, because this wraps around, you're getting spill light all the way around. So you're getting a softness of light that you don't get with a bare head. So I recommend these highly. When I'm shooting, one thing that I will do a lot too is in a long room, I'll point it like that and I'll get that beam going out and going into the room. Smaller rooms, I'll point it like this and without changing the, um, the settings on it, I can get more or less light into the room depending on how I bend it. Here, you can see the light would come back here and reflect in, but you're still getting light in here too. So this goes a long way to softening the look of your flash. So I think that's a really good thing to have. Once I get to the shoot, what I do is I will give the, the whole house a real quick walk around and get my feelings um, for, for the rooms. Um, obviously, I'm looking for light. You know, it, if you have a house that faces north-south, you've got east light in the morning and west light in the evening. And if at all possible, if you've got the time, you know, it's cool to shoot the, the east rooms in the morning because you've got that light there, the west rooms in the afternoon. Can't always do that in real estate photography, but you can try. Um, and you can at least shoot the east rooms in the morning if it's a morning shoot or the west rooms in the evening first. Um, and get that dynamic light um, because that's really the root of what I'm trying to do. I think so much real estate photography is flat. And I know I was just talking about getting flat lighting. Well, we build on that flat lighting. We don't just accept that flat lighting. But I would say a lot of what I see in real estate lighting and especially real estate editing is a, a very flat look. And um, to my eye, I just, I don't like it. And that's not what I'm here to do. It's not the, not the style that I'm looking for. I want a dynamic looking room. I want shadows. Shadows are what give a room character and depth. And they show us what's in the room. 
And that's where we're going with this. We're going to add shadows to a room, not take them away. Um, and I think, and I'm not running down, you know, overseas editing or anything, but it's pretty much the case. Anything you send overseas comes back, even if you light it with <laughs> shadows, it's going to come back pretty flat. And that's, you know, jokingly, we refer to that the, as the Vietnam style, me and some of my friends. Um, and it just, um, you know, it, it's fine for a second or a third bedroom or a bathroom or something like that. But what I consider the big rooms, the kitchen, the living room, and the, the family room, dining room, um, you know, they, they need to have some personality. They need to stick out. They need to stick in people's minds. They need to be memorable. And they need to be appealing. And that's, I think, where we're going Anyway, so I will go through the house and look for the really good lighting areas. And if they're happening right now, I will shoot them right now. I will shoot out of order. I typically will shoot um, entry, living, kitchen, dining, master, and then the smaller bedrooms and things like that, and then go to a different floor as need be. Um, because I kind of think that's the natural flow of a house. That's the way you want to see a house. That's the way you want to walk through a house. However, if the master bedroom, and this happened a couple weeks ago, if the master bedroom has blazing light, I'll go up there and shoot that first and then come down. It does kind of throw me off my game because I'm so used to the way I do things. Um, the one thing that really throws me off my game is having to switch between video and photography. Um, I just, I cannot do it room by room by room by room. I have to do the whole house photo and then do the whole house video. I cannot do it piecemeal. It's too much switching minds. They're two completely different mindsets. And um, I just, yeah, for me, that doesn't work. Your, your mileage may vary, I don't know. Again, back to the walkthrough, you know, I'm looking for problems and things I'm going to need to change. Yes, I change things. I change things a lot because that's what I do. I mean, that's at, at, at the level that I'm shooting, I'm creating great images of the house, not just showing what the, the homeowner thinks looks good. So um, I, I'm not opposed to moving kitchen or moving <laughs> couches, chairs, anything. And even in the macro, you know, when, when you're setting up a shot and you've got just a little corner of a chair sticking in, I'll take that chair out just to clean up the image or something like that. So um, keep your eye open for any potential problems, dog dishes, um, trash cans. I hate trash cans. I move those, um, you know, look for that sort of thing. Then when you start shooting, um, I think too many photographers will just shoot and move on to the next shot. Boom, shoot, got it, next shot. Boom, oh, okay, that works, got it. Shoot it, look at it. Um, spend some time looking at it. Do you have any dark areas? Anything that needs additional lighting? Um, look at it real close. Look at it in the viewfinder, not just on that screen. Um, and pay particular attention to the four lines that surround the, the frame. You know, are you cutting anything off? Um, you know, look for those problems because uh, they're much easier to solve on site th than in Photoshop. You know, I, I heard a joke a couple weeks ago, you know, you know, why should I spend five minutes at a location fixing a problem that I can fix in Photoshop in 20 minutes, right? So, you know, look for the problems, try and solve them on site because that is really going to help you. Um, I think too, it's important to cover your ass. Um, it is okay to experiment, have fun, do wild things, do crazy things, do things that you aren't sure are going to work. But cover your ass first. Make sure you have the shots that are going to sell the home. And once you've got those, go crazy. Have fun with it. You know, um, just because you shoot it doesn't mean you have to deliver it either. Um, and sometimes I'll tell that to clients too. You know, just because I deliver it doesn't mean you have to use it. 
Um, I'm of the opinion in my like landscape photography um, part of my brain or whatever it is. Um, five great shots is better than 20 mediocre shots. Um, and, you know, people will look at my landscape por portfolio and say, oh my gosh, you're so good. You just blow me away. How, how do you do all these shots so good? Well, I don't. Yeah, that's the dirty little secret. The, the secret is, I just don't show them. You know, if, if you have a shot and it doesn't work, get rid of it. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And the, I think the funny thing is, it took me a long time to realize that. But I'm giving you permission now. You don't like a shot, ditch it. Um, another thing is, don't always force yourself into shots that are going to be very, very, very hard to accomplish. Um, you know, you, you reframe. If you're spending more than five or ten minutes lighting a, a, an area, reframe it. You're probably wasting your time or, or working too hard. So those are kind of my philosophies going into this. Um, what we're going to go to next is um, a house that I shot, well, two days ago now, and it uh, it's up in Holiday, and it was it was not the house that you would be putting on your resume. Let me put it that way. Um, it wasn't bad, but it was not a six million dollar mansion either. Um, it was old, probably 60 years old. It was vacant. Um, what furniture was there was very threadbare. It was very unexciting. And yet, when you approach it from a standpoint of, I'm going to make really good pictures of this location, you, you can make, you can elevate that or any property. And I think that's really the essence of, of what, what I want to say. One of the things that came to mind um, was that it's it's really easy to shoot a two million dollar property. You know, something that's had a an interior designer come through and you know, with eighteen foot ceilings. You know, that's that's geez, anybody can do that. Um, and they're fun. God, oh my gosh, are they fun? I love it when I get those. But that's not what you get every day, generally. You know, you have to make your living on eight foot ceilings and 30 year old, 50 year old homes. Why not try and make the average home look like a $2 million home? Why not put the, the, the effort and the lighting into it? Because you can. And if you do, your images are going to stand out. You are gonna be different in the market um, and all those other, all those Vietnamese edit pieces, you know, all those very flat lit pieces are all going to be boom, 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 boom on the MLS. And then all of a sudden yours is going to just shine because yours has character and yours has finesse. And, and that's, I think, doing something extra for your realtor. It's helping them stand out. Um, you know, I shot this house, like I said, two days ago. Yesterday, I delivered the images at about 10, and by 11, I had an email from the, the realtor who was just blown away how good the images were. And I, they're not. They're, they're, they're good images. Um, but they're not what people are expecting for that house. And if the realtor was blown away, what do you think is going to happen to people who are looking on the MLS at those images? It's going to draw them in and it's going to, it, it's not going to sell them, but it's going to get them in there. And that's what our job is. That's what we're here to do. Um, you know, nobody is forcing you to get better at your craft. If you've got a clientele, you're set, you're doing good. The, um, the only reason you're probably watching this, this video is, is to get better and, um, the way you do that, I think, is to challenge yourself. Um, and I'm just going to wind this up by um, talking about a friend of mine in Pennsylvania. He's actually a portrait photographer. 
Um, his name is Joe Edelman, and he says something that I've I've really bastardized, um, but it, it I, I really feel it deep inside me that this is this is what our job is. Um, his way of saying it, I think, was um, he told me a couple times, and it was long and involved, and and I just shortened it to may your next shoot be your best shoot. And what I mean by that, I don't mean that I hope your next shoot is a $2 million home. I mean that whatever you shoot today, I hope tomorrow you learn something from what you did today and you push yourself tomorrow and you make tomorrow's shoot even better. You push yourself, you do something new, you do something that excites you, you do something that makes those images that much better than what you shot the day before. And then it doesn't matter, two million, three hundred thousand, ten million, you know, a forty million dollar Gulf Stream. Shoot, I shoot those all the time too. Um, doesn't matter what you shoot. If every shoot you aim to do better than your last shoot. And that's my hope for you. May your next shoot be your best shoot.